Good morning. Thanks for coming. Uh, because uh, this uh, topic may be very far away from uh, USA. Maybe not many people are interested in this. Don't worry. But this means that there will be plenty of opportunity uh, for us uh, to be there. Because uh, not many people can perceive that opportunity. <laughs> this is myself. I also have a Chinese name. You look Chinese. Are you Chinese origin? My, my grandma moved from mainland China 80 years ago, long time ago. If she moved to the US by now, maybe I may be named Bruno. <laughs> because uh, the uh, uh, day that I was born was the day of Saint Bruno. But I'm never a Catholic. Are you Catholic? I'm communist. I'm sorry. <laughs> Buddhist. <laughs> Buddhist. Yeah, so I also a member of the IAAO since uh, 1998 and also worked for help the uh, Presidential Foundation uh, in Washington DC in the International Evaluation Board. Uh, I came from this organization called Thai Appraisal Foundation. Uh, we have a lot of activities. We have only 800 members, very really small compared to IAAO. I think here you have uh, 1,200 uh, in the conference, about 8,000. We have only 800, only a small organization. And uh, this is some books that I wrote. So, uh, this uh, you can download for free. That is for the uh, new dedication and another one for the appraisal institute. Uh, that is about the uh, real estate uh, valuation in the global context. Hello. I have to pay you that <laughs> my uh, t-shirt here. So we conduct valuation in different uh, areas in the world, in Brazil, in Africa, and some other areas. Even in the area where we have a lot of insurgencies, a lot of terrorists are also there. Maybe we can go together sometimes. <laughs> and uh, this is where we do the mass espresso in Laos, in Vientiane in the capital city called Vietnam. Uh, next year, maybe next year I can uh, have this presentation, but maybe I don't know whether there will be uh, participants to listen or not, because Laos is even a very small country, but we conduct the mass appraisal over there. And this is when we uh, did something in Africa, uh, in Brazil, for the hotel valuation, and also uh, we value them in Indonesia, and also somewhere, somewhere in uh, our region, the ASEAN, A -E -A -S -E -A -N, we call ASEAN, mean the Asia uh, Pacific something, uh, Association, this is what we do, and uh, this is in Vietnam, in, uh, and uh, this is the case that we have some training in uh, mass appraisal by uh, uh, Mr. Lally Clark in Thailand, there may be some other instructors like to go to uh, uh, our country and I just have a uh, good news from uh, Cambodia that they like to have this sort of uh, courses in Cambodia as well so maybe I can go with uh, Mr. Lali Clark or someone else who be in Cambodia we may go to the uh, world wonder we call Angkor Wat over there so the situation this is the ASEAN This is the, uh, uh, we have 10 countries. Uh, here is Thailand. Oh, sorry. From Thailand, maybe far from here. Now it is 10 o'clock here. But in Bangkok, it is 9 o'clock in the evening. So I'm going to go to bed soon. <laughs> and uh, in this area, we still have the same time zone that is uh, around 9 o'clock, except Singapore. Yes, Singapore. Singapore, they, it is around 10 o'clock in the evening. Evening now. Something like Hong Kong. They use the same time zone. Even if they are in our uh, uh, time zone. And these are the 10 countries in this region. Altogether, we have around 600 million people. But uh, uh, in the, maybe uh, a little more than double of uh, population in uh, the U.S. But uh, here is uh, far, uh, far less uh, developed. 
compared to the U.S. This is the figures for comparison uh, above is Thailand and here is USA. You see USA. You, you can see that USA is uh, around 18 times larger than Thailand. USA uh, population is around five times larger than Thailand. And uh, you can see that the GDP growth in USA may be 0.8%. This is thank you, sir. This is my American uh, brother. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. The, we may not uh, doesn't look alike, but uh, <laughs> yeah, brother. And you can see here that uh, in the case of the uh, USA, our population growth may be around zero. Around uh, very low, very low. Sorry, it is not 34 percent. Uh, it is uh, 0 0.034 percent. I mean, uh, a little, little less than this. Maybe last night I was uh, sleepy, so it is not 34 percent. 0.034. Okay, very low. And here uh, you can see that this is the GDP, GDP of USA, 15 times larger than Thailand even if the population only five times more but uh, 15 times larger the size of the economy in the US is uh, really supreme and the GDP per capita is around 3.2 times higher than Thailand say in Thailand a big map may be one US dollar and here may be around three dollar or something so this may be some indicator and yeah, this is the uh, economy. Uh, we can see that uh, amazingly, they say that the U.S. has 15 percent of population below poverty line. We have 12 percent. Maybe uh, some poor American can move to Thailand. <laughs> but this, this may be in, uh, in different standards. Another thing is in Thailand, we have a subsistence economy. Uh, people can be in rural area, can be safe there uh, because a lot of uh, uh, free fish or something. But uh, in uh, the US, maybe uh, not, not such a case. Like uh, in the case of homeless, in the case of homeless, I'm also a chairman of a homeless foundation to help the homeless. In Thailand, we found in Bangkok alone, we found only 4,000 homeless. Really low. But in, the, in New York, I went to an, a foundation to help the homeless. They said there are around 60,000 homeless in New York. So many. I saw some homeless in Washington, D.C. They are playing around with their computer as well, uh, beside the road. They are privileged homeless, <laughs> compared to our Thai homeless. And so this is the situation. We can say that in this region, 10 countries, uh, Thailand may be the uh, third, second, uh, third largest city uh, country, but in our economy, may be the uh, second largest. And so we are the leaders in our region. So many people, when they go to this region, they will come to Thailand. Except in the case of trade, they go to uh, Singapore. But many also come to uh, Thailand as well. Uh, Singapore is a tiny uh, island state very small, even smaller than Manhattan. And yeah, there are five, six million people only, uh, but they are quite rich. They are, say the GDP per capita may be five times higher than that Thailand. So this is a very small state. But uh, if you compare Bangkok loan, Bangkok process half of the GDP of Bangkok of Thailand. So actually Bangkok is even larger than Singapore, but because Bangkok has a big hinterland, that's why uh, we look poorer than Singapore. So uh, this is the uh, the GDP growth in this area. It is booming somehow, but to some extent, a country like Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, who were formerly politically stable now a little bit shaky, whereas Indonesia, the Philippines, 
and Myanmar, where there were a lot of coup d'état, a lot of military occupation. But now they become democratic. So this may be some transformation. Like in Thailand now, we have some coup d'état. Uh, so there is uh, some disgrace uh, in Thailand. But uh, uh, maybe in the future, uh, we will pass that. But you can see that all the GDP growth uh, in this region is growing. Thailand may be not as high as many other like uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, but still uh, promising. That's why uh, you uh, can highly come to uh, Thailand. This is, uh, the uh, uh, this is the World Bank estimate, also promising uh, from two sources, the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank. So in the case of Bangkok, this is uh, just to present to you some figures about Bangkok, maybe very details, but at least you can see that we have very rich sources of information in Thailand since uh, 1994. Until today, we have the survey of newly launched housing projects. I have one uh, young lady is there, 1994, maybe she just born. So uh, this is uh, what happened. This is the uh, crisis in during 1997-98, and this is another small crisis, but uh, on the whole, it is uh, on the growth. These are all the housing projects. In Thailand, you may know that the uh, individual, individually self-built houses may be a small number. Most of the houses provided by the private sector. That's why we have so many housing projects in Thailand. Every project may be around 100, 200, or even 1,000 housing units. Low-rise residence or walk-up apartments, or high-rise apartments or condominiums. Yeah, those are included in these uh, projects. These are the projects launched first half of this year in Bangkok alone. Actually, we conducted the survey of around 70 large urban centers in Thailand. This is one of them. This is around uh, 201 projects for half of this year. If you don't believe, you can count. But actually, to a little bit, just believe me. So we can see that uh, most of the projects are in the half of the cities and also in some mass transit area. We have uh, supply train, subway. So in those area, they are booming. But in outside the sub, outside the uh, mass transit, maybe not so booming. You can see these are the house price. And this is, these are those uh, detached house, duplex, or semi-detached, townhouse, or barrack types, or shop houses, downs, uh, ground floor maybe for shopping, and condominium or apartments, and these are land subdivisions. So we have uh, six categories of housing, detached house, semi-detached, townhouse, or row house, uh, uh, shop house, condominium, and uh, this sort of thing. And we are in different price range, so we can see that in every zone, every city, uh, and as a whole, what are happening, uh, which are the most popular supplies in the market. We conduct this survey uh, very often, every quarter. These are the units still available in the market. These are the area where there are a lot of uh, sale very quickly. This means that this uh, type, like in this location for condominiums at this price range, the sale are very quickly. This means that this is a promising, uh, good for investment. But in the case uh, where the sale are very slow, this means that uh, this source of investment may not be preferable, may not be welcomed by the market. So this is uh, what we prepare for bankers, developers, uh, investors, and all buyers so that they have information for their decision making. 
these are the area that there is no new launches. You see, in Bangkok, we divided into 78 zones. Uh, what happened in different zones? These are the area that there is no 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 new launching. So this means that they are not so uh, active area in Bangkok. These are the uh, units that so very quickly. So this is uh, uh, where we can identify. These are the projects that will be coming in the future. We know that there are some are coming. They may be getting the permit. They may be preparing the site for new development. We can see what are happening. We can see that in the half of the cities tend to be walk-up apartments or condominiums. In the fringe, maybe low-rise residence. These are the projects that are uh, uh, in the pipeline that will be coming in the near future. Price changes. These are the price changes very really slow. Actually, there are three types of price changes. First one is the same units that so offer six months ago and now what are happening is a very slow, very small increase. I heard that in the US uh, last year and this year maybe around 6% increase. This is uh, 0.66. But we also have the uh, price uh, of the existing housing in the market that may be around 4% increase. And also we have another uh, price change that is the house price offer last year and the house price offer this year may be some increase as well. So these are three categories that we provide for the market. Bangkok is half of the whole country. This is Pattaya, where there are a lot of uh, massage or girls or something. Phuket, Chiang Mai, Phan Ken or something. These are major cities. So those are and the rest. So Bangkok is half. This is totally different from the US. In the US, you may have many cities. But Bangkok is half of the urban population. So this is very important. This is called primate city. So if you are in Bangkok, you can do a lot of business there. It is the center of everything. It should not be good, but uh, this is the appearance in Bangkok. And many cities in uh, many cities in Southeast Asia are similar. In the Bangkok alone, we have around 10 million people. Not so many. But Jakarta, they said there are more. So this is a, a price changes uh, over time. This is land price, bare land price here uh, around 3.2 percent. Next year, I mean this year, 2016, may be forecasted to be 3 percent. But we conduct this survey every six months in Bangkok. In Phuket, in Phuket, I have this presentation. Uh, in, you may know that in uh, on December 26, 2004, there was tsunami, you know, tsunami, the big wave, wiped out by many people, passed away. In this area, around 3,000 people passed away. And in Aceh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, there are around 160,000 people passed away. So we went to conduct some survey of land price increase as well after the property shock. So you can see that this is uh, the price increasing. But you can, this is a modification. In Patong Beach, after the tsunami, in the first year there may be no increase and then increase again. So this means that property shock might not be a case. I went to Aceh. Aceh is an area, is a center for the tsunami, the earthquake, for the, uh, earthquake. So tsunami was very hard, very strong there. Uh, the wave was around 25 meters high. But uh, many people uh, pass away, 20,000 people uh, around there pass away. I went there in a hotel, in that hotel looked very new, but I did, know, I did not know that that hotel was formerly a hospital. So the room where I stayed, many people pass away there. Are you afraid of ghost? Are you afraid of ghost? Ghost? Huh? You believe in God, not ghost.
<laughs> yeah, in the in the room the next day, uh, after the tsunami, another twenty people died there. Four hundred people died in that hotel. So, uh, but at night I did not see. I see nothing. No problem. So this is. You see, in uh, Phuket, 14% per annum increase. So this is a big increase, no, no effect on this. And this is uh, in the case of the price in Bangkok. In Bangkok, you see one square meter, one square meter, it is around 14,000 square, 14,000 US dollar per square meter. Say maybe around 1,500 US dollar per square feet. That is the most expensive land price in Bangkok, say 1,500 US dollar per square feet, or 14,643 uh, dollar per square meters. But in Bangkok, we use meters. So that is the case. Do you, do you know the conversion of meters and square feet? Say uh, one. Uh, square feet is 0 0.09, 0 to 3 something square meters. So this is uh, in the case of the most expensive land price. Phnom Penh, Phnom Penh is a neighboring country to Bangkok. You can see that there are many projects. But altogether, they have only less than 100 projects. In Bangkok, we have 1,000. Here, they have only 100. So the market is smaller, but this is booming a lot uh, in Phnom Penh. Uh, we have also a killing field. You. you see the movie Killing Field. Yeah, there is uh, some killing field nearby here, and you can have a look uh, if you visit there. So this is the when we conduct a survey uh, over there. You can see that uh, there are also most of the uh, units in uh, Phnom Penh. The largest majority. The largest proportion are uh, chop houses, 15,000 units out of 43,000 units. This is uh, different from Bangkok. Bangkok, the largest, the majority, 52%, above half uh, belong to condominiums. But here, one, around one third belong to uh, chop houses and also detached house, condominiums, smaller numbers. This means that they are still uh, a little less developed compared to Bangkok, Thailand. But uh, you can see this is the rate of sales, like in this case, uh, townhouse at the price of 150,000 to 300,000 US dollar can be sold very quickly. So this is the, another case. In the US, the house price may be uh, around 280,000 dollar per uh, unit. But on the average here, it's a lot cheaper, say 134,000. 134,000, maybe half price of the house in uh, USA. If you sell a house in the US, you can buy two here. So come to Puerto Rico. This may be uh, a good place to uh, stay there. And here, uh, this is a newly launched uh, product. Pro product. In 2016, we are going to conduct this survey again in October. That's why we still don't have information for you to have a look. Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City is the area, is the capital. It is not the capital city of Vietnam. It is not the capital city of Vietnam, but it is the largest uh, economic center or financial center in Vietnam. It is located in southern Vietnam. So this is uh, another uh, good location for investment. <laughs> this is where I went to conduct a survey by motorbike. In this, uh, in this city, uh, the uh, population of motorbike is a lot larger than the population of cars. Uh, so I conducted a survey in the cities. So I, uh, go, I went with her uh, to conduct uh, this survey. Another uh, very interesting thing is that you see all together we have 42,000 units but 38 or 92 percent belong to condominiums because in Vietnam land is smaller than Thailand but the population is 100 million already almost 100 million people so 
uh, Thailand, we have only 67 million. So in this case, uh, they go vertical. They go vertical. They like uh, condominiums instead of low rise stands. Something similar to China. They don't allow people to build low rise stands anymore in some, in some cities. Uh, that's why they need to go vertical. So this is another unique feature in Ho Chi Minh City. You see the newly launched, not many newly launched uh, uh, last year. This is in Manila. Uh, the US may be more familiar to Manila than Bangkok because this is closer, closer to Guam. Uh, maybe from the US, maybe easier to come here. Uh, from here uh, to Bangkok, I took around 31 hours to be here. Yeah. But uh, from the west coast of USA to Manila, maybe shorter, maybe 15 hours. If uh, in the case of direct flight, 15 hours. Uh, so this is uh, closer. Uh, this is uh, uh, in Thailand. We also have uh, some one look Indian. Someone look Chinese, like me, and someone look Thai also. We went to conduct this sort of survey. Uh, here is the uh, Bay of uh, Manila. Uh, so this is the uh, locations of all the uh, housing developments in Manila. They are also booming. Amazingly, one condominium unit, the smallest one, is around 15 square meters. Say 160 square feet. That is a box, a small box for condominiums. Oh, very amazing. They have some there. Your house may be uh, 2,000 square feet, but uh, condominiums and units here, the smallest one uh, is uh, 150 square feet, very small. Uh, if you stay alone, you may feel overcrowded. <laughs> Even one person. But if you are just uh, like uh, just uh, get married, maybe okay. <laughs> See, the small boxes, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, in Manila. So uh, here you can see that uh, most of the developments uh, in this case are also condominiums. Yeah. Eighty-nine thousand, say ninety thousand out of ninety-nine thousand, say around ninety percent were condominiums because they need to go vertical. So. In the Philippines, they also have some mass transit, right? like the train, the tram, or something. Uh, they're quite efficient in uh, Manila. But uh, Manila, uh, Jakarta, and Thailand, and Bangkok are the most uh, traffic congested cities, particularly Jakarta and Manila. Yeah. Sometimes walking may be uh, quicker than uh, taking a Cap. This is a newly launched. Uh, you see, uh, one US dollar is around 47 peso. Peso is the money of uh, uh, this and compared to that. You can see that uh, uh, most of the development, uh, in this case, this is in 2014, is the booming period. 2015 also the booming period. Then we come to Jakarta. Jakarta is a very really big city. So we have a team. These people uh, we sent from Bangkok to uh, conduct the survey in Jakarta. In every city, we sent our people to survey there. And we found the largest number of uh, housing projects compared to the local one. But uh, these people are uh, somewhat uh, more, more Indonesian. They are Indonesian. Uh, yeah, some Thai. So, uh, but we cannot distinguish like uh, because they are all uh, similar to Thai. This is the city of Jakarta. Actually, Jakarta is here, but we have uh, different conglomeration. This is uh, another vicinity cities, another vicinity city, another vicinity city, and here another vicinity cities. There are five cities altogether, but they call. Jabotabek, or they may call Jakarta as a whole, or the Greater Jakarta, something. So in this case, we divide it into nine zones. And see what's happening. You see, after Bangkok, this is the second largest cities. I mean, in terms of population, this may be more. 
But in terms of housing projects, this is the second in the priority because the economy is booming now. You may know that the GDP per capita, Bangkok is around one third of USA, but here is around one third of Thailand. But now they are booming, so there are more housing projects. In the future, I hope that there may be a lot more. I, I help uh, quite a few uh, housing developers from Thailand to move here. I hope, I expect that in the next 10 years, uh, the company here may be larger than the headquarters in Bangkok because uh, this is a very booming country. In the past, maybe the mess, and, uh, no government, a lot of fighting, a lot of riot, but now they are more democratic and very good order compared to Thailand. Maybe we are backward. Maybe we need your help. But Thailand uh, rural, they may not like the US, USA today because USA try to uh, push them to be more democratic, but they may not like democratic. Democracy. So this is the uh, housing project. In August, uh, you can see that uh, they are all together uh, 312 projects. In Bangkok, we have a thousand projects. This is one third. But this is more, even larger than Manila, Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh City. So this is the second after Bangkok. But in the future, that may be uh, better than Bangkok. I don't know. You can see that uh, of the whole developments, uh, say uh, all together 300 projects, uh, there are a lot in the case of uh, condominium. But the largest proportion is townhouse. Townhouse means barrack types or uh, row houses. You see, this is the largest group. Condominium may be the second in the priority. So this is uh, in the case of uh, uh, Jakarta. And uh, it is. Uh, uh, nowadays, there are a lot of Singaporean company, uh, Thai company, and other company to come into uh, this city. Actually, uh, I will uh, say something about mass appraisal, but let me just say something first about the property tax. I uh, uh, have this information presented three years ago, but last year and year after, before last, I was not here. But uh, uh, to talk about mass appraisal, maybe I have to uh, touch a bit about this uh, property taxation in ASEAN. But uh, by and large, you can see that uh, the booming of housing and uh, real estate development in this region means that there will be a lot of opportunity for investment and a, a lot of opportunity for our uh, assessors to work there. In the case of Cambodia, in this case of Brunei, Brunei is a very tiny country similar to uh, Singapore, but they have only 400,000 people there. 400,000 people, less than a million in that country. They have no property tax uh, because that is a welfare state. They have a lot of money from oil and gas, so they have a lot of welfare for the people. They need not to have any tax from the popular people. In as much as the people royal to the royal family, that's okay. In Cambodia, uh, I went to be a consultant there. In Cambodia, they also have property tax now. Uh, this is the assessment. Uh, actually, uh, the presentation in my, uh, the presentation that I submitted to the IAO uh, was not, uh, this was not appear. So I will send to the IAO later can get this information or maybe I can send you via email or something. In the Indonesia, they also have property tax, at least small amount, but they are starting to have it. So this is uh, what happened in Indonesia, uh, that they have uh, introducing uh, property tax already. In Laos, this is a very tiny country. The size of Laos is half of Thailand, but they have only uh, 8 million people for the whole country but now they have uh, uh, property tax as well you can see this is a tax rate like rice field or paddy field 
uh, in the case, case of upland rice, rice field, or uh, livestock and other agriculture, and something else. So they have uh, different standards for the tax. The amount of tax may not be a lot, but at least uh, this is the start. They still don't have value-based property tax. In Malaysia, they also have uh, property tax uh, uh, because this is a former British colonial. So they apply property tax. But in Thailand, may be different because we were not occupied by Fran French or uh, Great Britain. So we still uh, do not have uh, much of that. In Myanmar, this is another country that no property tax because they are uh, less developed in the past because there are a lot of fighting in the past. But now, uh, they are very secure. In the Philippines, if you, if you pay tax on time, there will be some discount for you. So this is a, a good thing to know about the Philippines. They also follow the uh, system of the US. So this is a case that uh, you can uh, enter the market easier. This is uh, in the case of Singapore, definitely under this uh, 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 administration, uh, they are before formerly the colonial of uh, uh, England. So they have uh, this sort of property tax and really uh, much in advance compared to Thailand. In Thailand, we have some sort of uh, rental tax. This is different from Hong Kong and different from some other countries. In Hong Kong, they tax 5% out of the rental value. Even if your house is not put for rent, but they uh, estimate your rental value, that may be around 6% of the property market value. And they tax you 5% out of that. But in the case of Thailand, if you do not put the house for rent, you have no need to pay tax. Uh, this is different. So <coughs> this is, uh, uh, we also have some stamp duty. Oh, uh, just for your information, this is our uh, uh, board member of the Thai Expresso Foundation down here. So this uh, our chairman. Uh, we changed the chairman three times already. We try to have some rotation uh, so that no one will occupy the, uh, the foundation or something. So we have election every year. <coughs> but the chairmanship uh, changed uh, every few years. And in Vietnam, they also introduced uh, property tax as well. Now they have, uh, you see the tax rate, maybe 0 by 0, 3 percent. In the US, you may uh, have around 1 to 3 percent. But this is really low, 0 by 0, 3 percent to 0 by 1, 5 percent. But at least they have introduced this sort of property tax in uh, Vietnam. There are around uh, 70 provinces. I work for some provinces uh, to introduce uh, mass espresso and property tax to them. I think there are plenty of opportunity to be there. Also, like in Indonesia and Vietnam and Philippines, there are so many local authorities that I think our assessors, our appraisers uh, from the US, from IAO can come and work with them. And also, yes, sir. Uh, they have the assessed value. The assessed value is somewhat uh, lower than the market value. Yeah. Something similar to here, but uh, uh, in, the, in Vietnam, maybe a lot, uh, somewhat less than uh, market value. Something like in Bangkok as well. And in the problem for us is that uh, uh, this was the, uh, I came three years ago for the IAO in Grand Rapids. Sorry, Mr. I did not have your photo, but I have the former. <laughs> former. <laughs> but he left, he left already in Thailand. If uh, anyone left already, I should not mention maybe politics or something. But should not, should not be here. So that is the property uh, uh, taxation. In the case of karma, uh, the use of uh, karma or computer assisted mass appraisal, I uh, learned from uh, Mr. Larry Clark, but uh, in 19, 
uh, 86, I learned from the Institute of Gun Policy. Uh, they uh, talked about that. And uh, he said, this is the uh, fact from Cambodia. They said that uh, this, is, uh, used, this is not much used in Cambodia. But they have around 20 provinces. In the future, I think, if we introduce uh, mass appraisal and uh, more realistic property tax, I think they should need it a lot. And apart from uh, property taxation, for the desktop valuation, desktop valuation, that is for those uh, financial institutions, for pre-finance or for loan purposes, they need also uh, about uh, mass appraisal. No, no. Yes, yeah. We just uh, uh, like a witch. <laughs> I mean, like uh, we just have some information and some uh, formula so that we uh, uh, so that we can pre-approve the loan. Uh, but that is. Uh, but in the case of uh, uh, complicated properties, we have to go there. In Indonesia, uh, my friend Mr. Hamid Yusuf, the president of. Uh, uh, MAPI, that is the Indonesian Association of Appraisers, but that is uh, Filipino, sorry, Indonesian uh, words. So the abbreviation is MAPI, but it is Indonesian Association of Appraisers. There are 3,000 members, very big organization. Yeah. So uh, there has been used uh, for the local authorities also. And I work for the Ministry of Finance, I work for them as well. They are also starting to do that, um, uh, as well as those uh, local authority and desktop uh, valuation uh, uh, automated uh, valuation model. Yeah, this is in Malaysia. Uh, there are there are several in Malaysia. They have developed quite quickly, and there are uh, quite a few papers related to this. This is one of them. So I just uh, uh, you can see in more further details. This is a computer-assisted mass appraisal application for property taxation uh, in Malaysia. So uh, the head of this uh, department of uh, uh, department of taxation, uh, my friend, he introduced this, and I think they have a thirteen state, one three, thirteen states. So they still don't cover all of them. So this should be a good idea to introduce in Singapore. Malaysia. Malaysia GDP per capita is 1.7 times, say almost double of Thailand's GDP per capita. So this country is richer, but the population only 30 million. We are around 67 million. So our economy is larger, but GDP per capita may be uh, uh, smaller. I mean, here is bigger. And and definitely, they are maybe less corrupted. That's why they are uh, go more advanced. Singapore, this is a small country, but they uh, use this. Uh, in Singapore, 85 percent, 80 percent of the houses, most of them are condominiums built by the Housing Development Board. Housing Development Board built 80 percent of the houses in Singapore. So they have a lot of rich information to do uh, this uh, karma system something. But in Thailand, we have National Housing Authority, but built only 1%. Most of the development in Thailand built by private sector, but most of the houses in Singapore built by the public sector, 80%. So this is some uh, significant. So the government can control the market really efficiently, and they can apply a lot of uh, ABM or karma something, something similar to the case of Hong Kong. In Thailand, uh, we try to introduce our karma system uh, from time to time and uh, have been successfully done uh, in many cases, but we still uh, need to do more. We have 75 uh, provinces but only a few provinces that we use this uh, computer-assisted mass appraisal. In Vietnam, this is the Ministry of Finance uh, 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 people where I work with them. Uh, 
uh, they also try to introduce. But as I tell you that there are so many provinces in Vietnam, the distance from Vietnam south and Vietnam north may be uh, 1,000 miles. But, uh, what, sorry, uh, yeah, almost 1,000 miles away. So there are several uh, provinces that should be introduced for the company, uh, for the uh, computer assisted mass appraisal. And this is uh, what we tried to build in the past. And in Thailand, right now, uh, we have the, this is a trap or something. Uh, we do the mass aggressor for some uh, 70 cities. I mean, we have uh, 78, 75 provinces. But cities, we may have around uh, 200 cities, urban centers. But we just do only 70 uh, cities where uh, we do the mass aggressor. Uh, since uh, 2014, 15, and 16. But uh, formally, we conduct some preliminary uh, cases for 10,000 experimental sites in uh, one uh, city in Thailand. And uh, after we use this uh, uh, model, uh, there, is, there is no complaint about the property price. This means that we uh, try, can use this uh, um, model quite efficiently and it is uh, in accordance with the fact that's why there is no complaint and here there might be some complaints because of the uh, 30 cities altogether but uh, still okay to start, like a good start uh, that we uh, can do something uh, for uh, this uh, start in Thailand and uh, for your information Thailand uh, we now have around uh, 1,000 municipalities and we still have another 3,000 urban centers, small urban centers that they need to value the property themselves but they still don't know how to do that. So I think we need uh, a lot of mass appraisal and every urban centers, and they, so altogether 4,000 urban centers, they can, they need uh, this sort of uh, thing to on. But uh, in the case of uh, other uh, countries like uh, Philippines, Vietnam and Indonesia, they go by province, but we go by city. So there are around 4,000 uh, clients uh, waiting. So uh, this is what happened here. And uh, this is a case that we do preliminarily in Bangkok. So uh, these are uh, all about uh, our presentation. So uh, if possible, uh, uh, we can see that in this region, 10 countries, there are a lot of opportunity for us for first education. Uh, second, in the case of the uh, software, and the second, uh, the third, uh, in the case of uh, the application uh, in every uh, urban centers that we need the uh, valuation of this. And in this region, we have all together around 100 financial institutions that giving loan for uh, housing loans and some also uh, other uh, real estate related loans. So uh, they should need uh, this sort of uh, computer assisted massive pressure as well. So uh, maybe you can kindly consider uh, to come to this region. And if you like to come, we can be your facilitator. Thank you very much for your time.